This is Marshwalker territory, Cartman. You don't belong here. Fuck you. I'm the Grand Wizard. I belong everywhere. Well, I just suck. That's the news of the day. Which one are you? A little blonde one over here not doing anything. <laughs> <laughs> So when it says start run, does the game, like, what's a run? Yeah. So the structure is a little bit similar to a roguelike. Okay. Um, in that you're actually going to do a run where your powers reset, your loadout resets. Um, okay. So you're going to have your base weapons and powers. You get two arranged in a melee and then two powers, kind of your shoulder buttons. So the what the, you're looking at right here is the kids have a trial to determine the rules, and that's tied into the storyline overall. So this is the bullshit trial where they're determining which uh, faction each, mm -hmm. each kid gets one super OP power. Um, so these are the bullshit cards, and you also get one starting upgrade. If you ever played like a, you know, like a Slay the Spire or something like that, uh, this is your starting upgrade. So you'll get one, you know, weapon augmentation. Uh, for example, I'm playing with a sword shield, uh, so I've got like an Omni block I can turn on that'll let me block from all angles with my sword and shield instead of just ahead of me. And then you get your bullshit power. What's the difference between a bullshit power and a regular upgrade? They have a, a limited number of uses, so you can only use it a handful of times. Um, and not a lot of opportunities to, to recharge that per run. So it's kind of your it's kind of your last your last call ultra uh, attack, if you think about it from another game. And, they, and the, um, the idea is it called a bullshit card because the kids say it's bullshit if you keep using it? That's exactly right. Yeah, uh, we were really, like I don't know if you remember yeah. Calvin Paul. Calvin and Hobbes, yeah. where the kids are just making up their rules all the time. <laughs> that is definitely uh, something we love and, and talk about a little bit. The idea that the kids are very imaginative, right? I mean, this is this is the fun of South Park, is you actually have these kids who can build their own universe and with its own internal logic and rules and then immediately find over those rules. So that's where a lot of the humor in the game comes from. Yeah, the rules become a very... Butters is, Mr. is the rules guy. Mm -hmm. And they it is one of those just like, you know, if you win, you get to make the rules. And yeah. then I have to play by your rules. So it's just like, it's like one of those like, you get to make the rules on Tuesday, I get to make the rules on Wednesday. To mm -hmm. Frame logic, you know, kid yeah. logic. So what the rules are and what the breaking the rules and who, you know, which kid is getting pissed off, frankly, about having to follow the other kid's rules is a big part of the game. So each of these locations we're going to visit uh, depending on the storyline, you might have to go to a couple of the same expected locations, but in between, we randomize a lot of the places you'll visit. So on repeat playthroughs, you know, you get a little more variety, which is, you know, good for co-op. And you were asking about the, the bullshit before. The, the faction that we're fighting against, the Mars Walkers, they just triggered bullshit, so now a bunch of their kids have... A bunch of their kids have different different weapons than they had before. The laser sword. Yeah, but he's got laser swords, which for, uh, you know, copyright reasons, but are instead of all like any. No, it's nothing like you've ever seen before, right. yeah. But so fictionally, what you guys are seeing right now, these are all each act kind of ties uh, to a general faction, uh, one of the leaders. So, you know, Stan has his Marsh Walkers, right? He's a Marsh, Marsh Walker barbarian lord. Kyle is the leader of the elves, uh, the Druish elves. I mean, it's, of course, the, he's the Grand Wizard of the Wizards Grande Supreme. So bring back the. Same fictional world that they uh, that the boys have used before, based on the you know your Lord of the Rings and Game of Thrones. Mm -hmm. So all of these powers, all these weapons, you're going to see upgrade over time. So you're going to find upgrade givers uh, kind of at the end of different sections of these runs. So as you're working your way through, you're going to run into Jimmy the Bard uh, or Henrietta, um, and they have different types of upgrades, different categories. Yeah, that will either make you you know multi shot for your bow and arrow, for example. Uh, upgrades for the healing totem. So instead of just being some cheesy boots, it'll also add uh, like a poly frizzy pants that helps do a wider healing uh, area of effect or something that'll damage enemies. That'll, you could use it to stand in to revive your fallen allies. So if somebody gets, you know, KO'd, they're crawling around on the ground. You can come back and, you know, you stand in right. the general vicinity mm -hmm. and raise them up. And the more people you've got in the area, you know, you'll raise them up more quickly. By the way, I got a uh, fart escape, so you can light my farts on fire. <laughs> Do you have the fart thing? Are you farting? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you want to see the fart? <laughs> yeah, fart too. Can you see me? <laughs> so Henrietta uh, sort of has these dark paths, you know, from the goth world. No, uh, she's true. playing her own game, basically. You got. And uh, these will these will make some different things. They'll either modify your existing deck, discard a card in order to get some dark matter. Dark matter is a long term currency. Um, tied to the fiction of the world. It's the uh, mysterious power that explains everything. 
you know, when you run out of ideas, you just point to dark matter as the cause of it. Uh, but we have taken that into a literal currency that you're actually collecting. Are there any like uh, deep cut show references that made it? Uh, I think there's quite a bit of them. Yeah. Like a lot of locations, like we do Soda Sopa as a location. City Pot Town. City Pot Town. We yes, do Deep Stark's, Pot Town. Stark's Pond. I don't know. There's a lot of uh, little stuff like that and definitely some characters that pop up. That's a fun thing with South Park. Everything is a deep cut. <laughs> I was going to ask actually, is there, in terms of like, you know, there have been so many South Park episodes now. Is there an like internal Wikipedia that you can give to people to refer to? Like this you're is, so you know, you're everything so you're like one dude that remembers everything. No, we just use Wikipedia. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's it. No, no, intro. There is Wikipedia. We're like, what do you mean? we look it up. We go, oh, that's happening that episode. I do that all the time. Oh, really? So oh, we have sure no, I don't remember anything. Yeah. I mean, tr try a little more, but I don't think, we always are like, did we do that? Because yeah. sometimes we'll talk about it, but we hadn't really done it, you know, or something. There's also the dreaded, we did an episode about it. There's the dreaded, well, let's just see if the Simpsons did it. And a lot of times, you know, they've already done it or somebody else has, you know what I mean? But Wikipedia lit literally is our. We, we actually set up a, a tool in the in production. We started it about three years ago where we scanned in every single episode and we actually have all the scripts are, are live with the video. So if Trey's like, hey, I want to make a joke about this, he could just type in the joke and see if he's used it before. Yeah. It's sad how much we have. And then we come yeah. up with the same joke and we're like, I have the best idea for a joke. And it's like, you did that joke. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a use for AI you could just make a, a South Park oh, yeah. that just knows everything. I'm waiting for we're definitely. And so this is Jimmy, the, the, the bard. Yeah, you're going to find him at the end of most of these areas. And it's, the idea being you're, the fun thing about this, the way we built these runs, is you're going to get the opportunity to kind of go to a really unbalanced build by the end of the, by the time you reach the boss. Right, the right, run. right. Mm -hmm. So they've got a nice little arc, and you have this power arc that is, to us, the very fun thing you get to do at a play, right? Which is build your ridiculously stacked, unbalanced build. But we then reset that before you start the next run. So you get the opportunity to do that climb kind of again and again. And it also helped tip sort of keep the length of a run to a reasonable length. Because it's a co-op game, we don't want to make it an hour long. Yeah, like we want to keep this to something minutes. more like, you know, 30, 45 minutes. Mm -hmm. So that, you know, you can go get dinner. You can have one more round. The one that, and that was making, there was a couple of the runs that were really long that were like, yeah, if you die, it would suck. You have to go back. So we, we tried to cut it up in a way that was like, yeah, it's achievable, but, you know, you're not going to get stuck, stuck. Mm -hmm. When it comes to sort of picking which characters, you know, you'll meet for things like upgrades and that are just part of the story, do you kind of just go with personal favorites? Are there ones you know the fans really want to see? Or Well, this, okay, for this game, it really was just starting with the core kids and working outwards, right? And giving them their, like, okay, they're, they're on Snow Day, I usually do this, usually they just all get their, they go run in their closets, they all have all this down in their heads, they got all those cards that they've already made. And uh, so finding, you know, deciding Butters is going to be this, Cartman is the Grand Wizard, and of course wants to control everything you know, um, and letting those relationships unfold because it really, you'll see, it really becomes a story between the four boys. Are you part of uh, Cartman's faction the whole game or does that change? That changes, that's that's the big, there, it's definitely there are factions and, and who's who's uh, who's up, who's down is a big, who's up gets to change the rules and then they get to be like a little mini dictator. So the three kind of numbers we're seeing that the toilet paper, dark matter, and there's PP. Uh, toilet paper is the other currency. So uh, there's a rift there. You know, COVID had happened when we started working on this game. Uh, when the hoarding of toilet paper is a very early inspiration for currency that everybody would be yeah. hoarding during the, the end of the thing. So that's actually, you talked about the, maybe since we were talking earlier about the adults have the storyline, uh, you know, the TV show a little more often. There is an adult storyline yeah. between uh, Randy and Stotch um, about who can, who can collect the most, who's hoarding the best. It's just, it's just not funny thing. Just as soon as there's a, a disaster, we go back to toilet paper. And that, that's basically money in our town. It's like a currency. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, is, I, I the guess kid, the kids use it like a current. Everything is, everything is toilet paper based. <laughs> oh, definitely uh, something that's been in the last couple of games that one of my coworkers who's obsessed really wants to ask is this, it's, uh, did Chin Pokemon make any sort of appearances in this? Yeah. Oh, he okay. does? Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The chip Pokemon is uh, in there. 
yes, we do have that. Uh, it's a, I mean, it's quest item. You'll have to go retrieve uh, our collection of Sin Pokemon. It's tied to the hoarding storyline. So people are collecting all sorts of uh, all sorts of otherwise worthless collectible items. Uh, NFTs is another. You have to go collect a barrel of NFTs. Not just yeah. making worthless things. We definitely, we definitely <laughs> wanted to, uh, you know, make this game fun for the diehard. South Park fans like your coworker who would you know get excited by seeing something like that in the game. About what the process was like recording the kids' audio, were you just like, okay, shout out into this microphone or pretend you're, you know, what was, how did that work? Uh, I just, I, I set them up and we, I mean, we wrote, we had script for everything, so we had all, all the script and then we would just go through it. It was, it was, it was really fun because you know having, having my kids, my kids, I've got ten year old twins and a nine year old. And so it was really fun having them scream all of these these different things, and they just had a great time, like just being kids. And it's not normally something that I let them yell at home, so it was fun for them. Oh, uh, this is Kenny. Yes, it is. This is a tough fight. Can you guys tell me anything about how the Princess Kenny fight came together? It's like a I don't know how it just Princess just look at it, it's just bonkers. It's like a Japanese <laughs> karaoke machine creating it. Yes. Uh, I mean, on. she's yeah, she's such a fan favorite, Princess Kenny. You know, we yeah. had to, and, and she wasn't initially a, a a boss fight. It was you go straight to Stan, but we wanted to do like a a, a mini boss before you get to him. But she charms you. Yeah, yeah if, if, she, <laughs> if she kisses you, you turn against your friend. You turn against your friends, yeah. So this is a very difficult boss pretty early into the game. <laughs> this is like a mini boss, really. Yeah. yeah. Well, this is the, this is the end of the run, so we'll have a second. Uh, yeah, this basically, right. this, oh, yeah, this is the end. What you would think of as like Act Two, uh, and, and then an Act Three. Yeah, 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 yeah. This one really is though. An, this is a definitely an odd. This one stands out as this, this whole weird style. This is a very. The rest of the game is definitely not in this style. Yeah, no, Kenny is very much the uh, this side show is the wrong word, but just sort of the fun. A little bit yes. of a left turn compared to the rest of the bosses, which are more traditional. Yeah, they're much more. In this, they're much more in the world. Come on, almost there. Come on. Oh, oh wow! Oh. I've only died three times in this one fight. Come on! Oh no! Come on. We're so close! We're so close! No! Hey. Nice. Okay. Yeah. We got there. We got through it. Do you think you're gonna? You think you guys are gonna? I mean, obviously you did stick through the faction, but whole very similar game. Is you think this is? You know, you're gonna revisit this format. I would love to. I mean, we'll see how this goes. As I said, this was a this was a we tried to again bite off a bite off a doable piece to do our first 3D thing, not not have not um, bite off too much. But it definitely shows that, like you know, the, the, for me, I just accept that these are the South Park kids. I know it's a new look, but to me, it makes total sense. I think we've got we learned a lot about the animation, and I think now we could really go mm -hmm. even further. So hopefully, I mean, even though it does, you know what I mean? All the people think about it. Well, also now that you've done this in the game, is it something that you could maybe this 3D format bring back to the show? We we thought about it like, you know, but again, this like what, what how you would do that and make something out of it? I don't know. Uh, for comedy's sake, I don't think it's any funnier in 3D. I don't think it's any less funny in 3D, right? So if you're just trying to deliver jokes, it doesn't really matter. But for gameplay and like being able to just put stuff in a world like the 2d stuff is amazing as it is to to make those games it was really really hard when you think about what you have to work with yeah you know it's just a very confined you know like how we even made those fights work mm -hmm. um it's, the freedom here to to create is just a lot easier in the 3d realm and the game like the previous games 2d games it, you know it feels like you're in a soft part movie it you know it is very immersive this is more of a visceral feeling of just like being able to run around in South Park and run around in the snow and play in the snow. Yeah. Like it's just, you know, very fun. Yeah. And the combat, you know, I love, I love turn-based combat, but it's also, you know, fun to have that real time, just beat them up kind of fun too, especially when you're playing with your friends. Yeah. yeah. I also saw um, from, I think, from my Paramount said over that um, the DLC will allow you to like revisit different storylines within the show. Yeah, how I don't know how we're releasing the DLC. We're doing there's some new weapon stuff. We're doing some new weapons, some weapon skins, and then we're also because the game is is about advancing your character. I think classes you could speak to this really well, but 
part of the collection is to get toilet paper and dark matter to to advance your character. And part of part of dark matter um, is advancing your character uh, to make you more powerful. And those those are the things that we're going to release DLC about. Matt, I don't know if you, you want us to talk about horde mode because we can talk about that too. Sure. Yeah, I'm talking about that. So the horde mode is is we we talked about Henrietta in the game. She kind of has tarot cards. Mm. And so the way Henrietta works in the game is that she changes the challenge for your, you, you actually trade in things with her and you can get um, more dark matter. And what's really cool is that she set up this whole world, her and Jimmy, and you go in and do like waves of enemies. And it's really fun because it lets us like mash up the entire game into different sections. So we've got, uh, we, we were fighting at the start of this level and we were out by Stark's Pond Heads, heading towards the city, but you're going to be able to fight in the city. And actually that city center on the ice, that's a like an arena that you can fight in and fight multiple waves of enemies. So it's really, it's, it, it's really cool in the way that we can do it. And like Matt was talking, the ability for us to put in, you know, new things into the game based on new content that comes out, uh, whether it's on TV or the Paramount Plus events. That horde mode will be a, a free deal since the night comes out. Oh, us awesome. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and then hopefully we'll do another DLC later this year, like a more yes. some of the rules on the character. Yeah. It's cool. It just feels like you're in South Park. It feels like yeah. you're running around like a kid in South Park, you know. Yeah.